Hello, welcome back. Today in this lecture, we will go through K results obtained from important erosion wear study of tungsten carbide cobalt coatings. Tungsten carbide cobalt is known as a hard material and this cermet because it is a ceramic of tungsten carbide and cobalt as a metal this is called a cermet. So, this tungsten carbide cobalt cermet is a candidate material for variety of engineering applications for example, cutting tools, rock drill tips, certain wear parts and tools and dies for the forming. So, in all these applications there is a significance of the wear resistance. So, in all applications wear resistance of this material is of primary concern, but the failure occurs in these materials because of the removal of the binder metal then followed by the removal or the fracture of these tungsten carbide grains. But overall the tungsten carbide cobalt bulk materials are studied for their wear behavior. Whereas, the wear behavior of tungsten carbide cobalt coatings is not yet considerably understood. Particularly the erosion wear of these tungsten carbide cobalt materials is not understood. Tungsten carbide cobalt was coated by a detonation coating method using three levels of oxygen to fuel ratios on a mild steel substrate. And the feedstock of tungsten carbide and 12 percent cobalt was used for the coating. And all these coatings gave a uniform thickness of around 350 micron meter. So, in this study we have three different coatings designated by the difference in their oxygen to fuel ratio. The oxygen to fuel ratio was 1.16 in one case, 1.50 in another case and 2.0 in the other case. So, these coatings were done to obtain a uniform thickness of around 350 micron meter and the representative hardness showed the hardness varied between 9 to 11 giga Pascal and then the elastic modulus varied between 290 to 300 giga Pascal. And the for the comparison a tungsten carbide 12 percent cobalt bulk material is also taken for this study and you can see this hardness of this bulk material is around 12.85 giga Pascal and the mild steel substrate of course, has a very less hardness of around 2 giga Pascal. So, the microstructures reveal very important information. We can see the sintered material has the tungsten carbide grains and then this black one is this binder phase. And when the tungsten carbide cobalt coated material was studied for their microstructural characteristics, there is a difference in the number of this density of these tungsten carbide cuboids with respect with change in the ratio of this oxygen to fuel. And you can see the number of density of cuboids are lower relatively in case of the oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.5 and 2.0 coatings compared to that for the oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.16. And you can also see there is certain bright contrast regions, these bright contrast regions are decarburization regions. 
So, brighter decarburation regions are significant in case of the coatings obtained using oxygen to fuel ratio 1.5 and 2.0. In another study, it was found the maximum decarburization of around 45 percent in case of oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0 and 34 percent in case of the coating obtained using oxygen to fuel ratio 1.5 and very less decarburization of around 4 percent in the other coating uh, you obtained using oxygen to fuel ratio 1.16. In this study, the, the abrasives that we call erodents are three, silicon oxide, aluminum oxide and silicon carbide. So, these were considered because of their differences in their hardness. Silicon oxide is less harder material out of these three and silicon carbide is the material with highest hardness of around 28.5 giga Pascal. And silicon oxide having a hardness of around 11.75 giga Pascal and aluminum oxide is in between uh, in the hardness. And the particle size of these erodents are between 147 to 227 micrometer. You can see all the particles are of a angular shape and aluminum oxide is a bit flaky shape and these two silicon oxide and then silicon carbide are angular and block a block type whereas aluminum oxide erodent is of angular and flaky type. The erosion was conducted in a solid particle erosion tester where these solid particles of erodent were impinged on the sample in this case the coating or this mild steel or the tungsten carbide cobalt bulk material. So, the erodents are silicon oxide, aluminum oxide and silicon carbide particles and erosion was conducted with a erodent mass feed rate of around 3 for silicon oxide, 3.6 for aluminum oxide and 3.8 for the silicon carbide. This mass feed rate is in gram per minute and erodent velocities were changed from uh, 25 meters per second to 45 meters per second. So, the impact angles were changed from 30 to 90. So, the study was conducted to understand the behavior of the tungsten carbide cobalt coatings with change in the erodents, impact velocity and impact angles. So, again the erosion wear rate was determined by measuring the weight loss then converted into volume loss. The volume loss per unit mass of the erodent used that will give the erosion rate. So, erosion rate as a function of different materials and the different uh, erodents and the angles of impact. So, you can see these solid triangles are data for the silicon carbide and at 30 degrees angle of impact whereas, this hollow triangles are of silicon carbide data of silicon carbide at 90 degrees angle. Similarly, these squares is of for the aluminum oxide and this diamond shapes indicates the data for the silicon oxide. Now, let us understand this behavior. There is a low erosion wear rate of the bulk tungsten carbide cobalt, right. The coatings deposited at an oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.50 and show relatively lesser wear, lesser erosion wear rate. So, you can see in each condition the 1.50 case showed a lesser wear rate right and uh, uh, compared to compared to those obtained for an oxygen to the coatings for uh, used coatings obtained with oxygen to fuel ratio of 1 uh, 2.0 or 1.16 you have lower erosion wear rates for the coatings obtained using 1.50 oxygen to fuel ratio right so this type of 
behavior can be understood on the basis of their mechanical properties. So, generally when ceramics or any brittle materials are subjected to erosion by a sharper objects. So, there is a crack formation and then material will be removed because of by the fracture. So, indentation fracture toughness is measured to understand the resistance against the propagation of crack. And you can see the indentation fracture toughness for these three coating materials vary between 2.9 to 5.1 ampere root meter. So, maximum fracture toughness is obtained for the oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.50. So, you can see the hardness is again maximum for the uh, coating obtained with oxygen to fuel ratio 1.50. And, but if you can see the mechanical property influence generally for a brittle materials there is a combination of this hardness and fracture toughness and the elastic modulus that actually determines the erosion wear. So, here also we can see that combination better prop the combination of uh, improved properties of inundation fracture toughness of 5.8 ampere root meter and hardness of 11.15 giga Pascal showed uh, a uh, uh, lesser erosion wear rate compared to other two. In other words, we can see the strong influence of indentation fracture toughness than the hardness. Hardness does not change much from 11.15 to 11.00 with uh, changing oxygen to fuel ratio from 1.50 to 2.0, but the fracture toughness is maximum for the uh, around 5.8 m ampere root meter for the oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.50. That means, there is a strong influence of the fracture toughness on the erosion wear rate of this material coating material. Let us understand the behavior more in detail. Erosion wear rate as a function of erodent target hardness ratio. So, this ratio is of the hardness of the particle used to the hardness of the target. So, we can see this erosion wear rate of coatings generally increased with the hardness of the indent right. You can see this is a silicon oxide, aluminum oxide and silicon carbide. So, again this diamond uh, data represented by the diamond uh, lesant is very low right. So, we have a lesser erosion wear rate when the silicon oxide was used. whereas highest erosion wear rate was obtained when silicon carbide was used right. And with respect to the uh, oxygen to fuel ratio again the erosion wear rate was less for the coating obtained using oxygen to fuel ratio 1.50 for any erodent. So, we can see then an increase in the ratio from 1.0 to 2.5 results in an increase in wear rate of almost 3.5 to 4 times. This hardness influences the erosion considerably. To understand the erosion wear behavior, it is very important, very much required to understand the uh, dominant material removal mechanisms. So, these are the worn surfaces after erosion of a bulk com tungsten carbide cobalt eroded at 30 degrees impact angle and 45, min 45 meters per second impact velocity with the different erodents. Now, you can see in general, in general the material is removed by removing first this material of cobalt followed by the cracking and then pull out of this tungsten carbide. So, if you understand the microstructure in such a way that you have certain tungsten carbide grains and these are actually attached through this cobalt phase right. So, when the erodent attacks the surface of this material first the deformable softer material will be easily removed. When the softer material cobalt binder material is removed these materials of tungsten carbide grains they will be subjected to further attack uh, by the erodents. Now, 
when these are not intact with the cobalt binder because it is smeared away or removed away. So, these tungsten carbide cobalt can be removed as such as so you get a pull out or there can be some fracture of this grains tungsten carbide cobalt. So, in this particular bulk tungsten carbide cobalt material the tungsten carbide cuboids are mostly pulled out pulled out right. So, particularly if you see this uh, one surface after erosion by the silicon oxide you can see lot of these uh, uh, material removal by the pull outs of this tungsten carbide right tungsten carbide cuboids. But when the aluminum oxide or silicon carbide were used were used the craters are more deeper and then material is displaced away right. So, you can see such a large area of this crater. So, the crater is deeper and the area is also larger which is the material is displaced from the edges. So, we can say again with uh, if you consider the hardness of these materials of erodents silicon oxide is of a lesser is lesser harder uh, less harder uh, erodent whereas, silicon carbide is of high hardness. Uh, so, you can say the hardness of these erodents affects the size of the crater or the displacement. Uh, so, when the silicon oxide of uh, which is less in the hardness is used as an erodent the crater size is less or in other words when uh, harder materials like aluminum oxide or silicon carbide were used the crater sizes were more right. So, particularly this crater is maximum when silicon carbide was used. So, this is this is the uh, these are the eroded surfaces of the bulk tungsten carbide cobalt uh, after eroding at 45 meters per second and 90 degrees angle. Again there is no much difference in the dominant mechanisms of material removal with respect to the impact angle there is only a difference in the severity. Now, let us understand with the tungsten carbide cobalt coating. The tungsten carbide cobalt coating eroded surface uh, now this particular eroded surface of a coating which was done at oxygen to fuel ratio 1.50. Uh, now, you see in case of silicon oxide erodent comparatively minimum craters and the deformation is 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 uh, uh, observed. So, material is removed mainly by the chipping very minor chipping. So, again the in this case the first of all the material which is a softer in nature which is cobalt binder is removed followed by the fracture as well as the pull out of this tungsten carbide cuboids. When in case of aluminum oxide a large scale deformation on the surface is observed right. So, th there is a large scale deformation you can see the large scale deformation and severe deformation is observed when silicon carbide was used. So, so in general the coatings were worn away by chipping or the micro cutting or the deformation with the change in angle with change in angle of impact. So, uh, uh, the severe plastic deformation resulting in the crater or lip formation you can see lot of lips right. So, when this particle erodes the material is removed and then at the edges there is a material ejected from the edges and which forms as a lip. So, you can see lot of lip formation lip result uh, when eroded with the aluminum oxide right and then silicon carbide. So, this type of uh, deformation signatures are more when the, the surface is eroded by harder erodents of aluminum oxide or silicon carbide compared to silicon oxide. You can see such time striations, the striations are nothing but the deformation signatures. So, increased crater depth with the increased particle hardness is observed when we use the aluminum oxide to silicon carbide. So, 
also these kind of surfaces show lot of crater forming when you use the erodent of high hardness. So, this material is removed by the cutting that is the crack formation. So, the if you look at the subsurface damage of these materials, first of all this bulk material. So, you do not see much subsurfaces irrespective of this erodent used. However, the extent of damaged region was actually increased in the order of silicon oxide more than the aluminum oxide more than the silicon carbide. So, in silicon when silicon carbide was used larger extent of the damage region was observed uh, compared to aluminum oxide or to silicon oxide erodent. So, for the coating for the coating you can see we uh, largely confined zone right confined subsurface damage uh, for the coatings deposited at any oxygen to fuel ratio when used when silicon oxide erodent was used. Whereas, extensive damage you can see the damage is only here right very few microns. So, here there are tens of micron meters subsurface damage is observed when we use the aluminum oxide or silicon carb silicon carbide erodent. So, the even with the increased oxygen to fuel ratio similar trend is observed. So, in addition to the subsurface damage uh, there is a subsurface cracking in addition to the surface we can see subsurface cracking when the oxygen to fuel ratio is higher at around 2.0 oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0. So, if you roughly estimate the subsurface damage it is around 40 to 50 micron meter when aluminum oxide or silicon carbide was used whereas, only less than 10 micron meter when the erodent of silicon oxide was used. So, subsurface crack is very important because these subsurface cracks they coalesce each other and then form a uh, bigger crack and then the material is removed by the fracture. So, further investigation was also done to understand the crack propagation in the subsurface region. So, very interestingly there are two types of cracks one is that crack which is almost parallel to the surface coating surface right and also there are certain cracks which are perpendicular to the surface coating surface. So, there are actually horizontal cracks as well as vertical cracks found. So, uh, horizontal cracks located at the almost to the splat boundaries right in and along the decomposition boundaries. So, vertical cracks are generally found in the cobalt binder region actually this cobalt binder region is also having the tungsten and carbon decom uh, as a result of a decomposition of this tungsten carbide. Because of the decarburization this tungsten and carbide go into the cobalt region and make it more brittle because of such brittleness they crack. So, there are two different horizontal and vertical cracks and the intersection of these cracks lead to the isolation of the material and then the material is removed as we say the wear. So, the decomposition behavior of these coatings also play a plays a vital role in judging the erosion wear rate. So, erosion mechanisms can also be understood with respect uh, with respect to the uh, erodent used in case of silicon oxide erodent low hardness and as well as the low kinetic energy this kinetic energy was estimated because we know we know the particle which is coming right. So, it it it, it uh, indents on the surface with a certain velocity velocity. So, the kinetic energy can be estimated. So, low hardness and low kinetic energy uh, in case of silicon oxide that leads to very less uh, subsurface damage as we found and the main mechanism of the material was by microchipping. Whereas, in case of in case of uh, aluminum oxide this is actually aluminum oxide aluminum oxide erodent uh, high hardness of this particle and high kinetic energy that gave to substantial penetration of this erodent and 
the material is removed mainly by the ploughing and then the micro cut cutting mechanism. The crack depth is almost more than around 40 micron meter whereas, in case of silicon carbide erodent because of the highest hardness out of these three materials of erodents and high kinetic energy. Kinetic energy if you see it is almost close to that, the, that of the aluminum oxide. So, but a combination of the hardness and kinetic energy which is highest hardness and high kinetic energy that lead to more cracking. So, more cracking and, the, and delaminations are observed are observed in case of the silicon carbide erodent. So, erosion wear mechanisms uh, can also be understood with respect to the efficiency of this erosion. Efficiency of the erosion can be uh, determined by the material removed from the surface to the material indented because of this erosion. right? So, you, you know this elastic modulus hardness of the target material the velocity. So, you know you, you can know the efficiency values for the investigated material when this different erodents were used. You can see you the, uh, the coatings uh, uh, efficiency varied between 4 to 6 uh, 6 percent when the silicon oxide was used whereas, 12 to uh, around 13 to 18 uh, percent in case of aluminum oxide whereas, high efficiency of around 35 to 41 percent is observed when silicon carbide was used. So, generally speaking the efficiency if it is of uh, uh, less than 5 percent, 5 percent the material is removed by a ductile fashion. That means, by mainly by uh, ploughing and lip formation. If it is more than 5 percent generally, generally around 100, 10 to 100 percent it is mostly by the brittle fashion that is by cracking and then material. So, cracking this cracks coelus and the material is removed. So, it indicates actually this value uh, these uh, uh, efficiency values indicate that the coatings have are having a mixed mode of fracture the right you have certain coatings which are less than 5 percent and some uh, more of more or less more than this one. So, you you do not have exactly the brittle fracture this is a mixed mode of fracture but with a larger dominance of the ductile metal behavior because it is not much higher than usually what we uh, observe for the brittle materials. So, this kind of uh, wear mechanisms of largely ductile metal type uh, like behavior is also supported by our SCM analysis where we have seen the lip formation and deformation as well as crack formation and crack propagation. So, lip formation and deformation is a ductile is representation of ductile behavior whereas, this is representation of the brittle behavior. So, you have a simultaneous occurrence of both. So, generally we understand the wear by domination of these ductile or brittle behavior. Erosion test results can also be understood by the ratio of the erosion rate obtained at 90 degrees to the erosion rate obtained at 30 degrees. So, this is the data for the erosion done at 25 meters per second, this is the data for the erosion done at 45 meters per second. Now, in case of the softer silicon oxide erodent the value is less than 1 right. So, generally in the 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 if the value is less than 1 that means, uh, generally at higher uh, angles the cutting is more dominant. So, at a lower angles uh, it is ploughing more dominant right the deformation. So, in case of the softer erodent the value is less than 1 again indicating the deformation dominated wear mechanism. Whereas, in case of silicon carbide it is a bit uh, it is higher, but it is if you see it is less than it is around 0 0.9 to 1.2 if you consider all these things it is around 0 0.9 to 0 0.1.2 uh, it is not as expected uh, for the brittle materials it is always more than 1, but you have certain 
uh, cases where it is less than 1 also, but it is still higher than the values obtained uh, when silicon oxide was used. So, the values obtained were higher for the silicon carbide erodent compared to silicon oxide erodent and aluminum oxide erodent the values are in between. So, if you see the velocity effect there is a significant uh, effect of this impact velocity of either this mild steel or the bulk tungsten carbide cobalt irrespective of the erodent. But if you see the coatings generally the tendency is a decrease in the values is observed with increase in the impact velocity. So, if you consider this ratio versus the hardness of the coating to the hardness of the erodent used, now you can see a very distinct uh, uh, zones where when silicon carbide was used it is giving very larger uh, higher ratios, whereas silicon oxide was used it is giving very lesser ratios and aluminum oxide is in between. So, you can actually divide the erosion behavior with respect to the mechanisms or the dominant mechanisms when silicon carbide was used either in case of 25 meters per second or 45 meters per second the material is removed by the brittle uh, by the brittle fashion by uh, whereas the silicon oxide which is softer so the ratio is going towards 1 right so you get lesser erosion erosion ratios. So, the ratio uh, this is actually lesser. So, erosion is lesser when it is close to it is going towards 1 the, the ratio is also lesser when it is moving away from 1 it is lesser than 1 when it is lesser than 1 the ratio is higher. So, so we can actually understand the behavior with respect to mechanisms by these erosion rate ratios at 90 degrees and 30 degrees uh, with the hardness ratios of coating to erodent. So, when the ratio of this hardness going towards 1 the this E 90 to E 30 ratio is lesser. When the ratio is less this erosion rate ratio obtained at 90 and 30 degrees angle is actually higher. So, we can divide this uh, the map into 3 different regions resimes, brittle resime, ductile resime and aluminum oxide is in between. Finally, to conclude this salient results obtained from this study, the erosion wear of this coating is influenced by the microstructure of the coating or in other words the properties of the coatings impact angle as well as the type of the erodent used. The erodent wear is increased with increase in erodent hardness mainly because of the decreasing efficiency with which the incident energy of the erodent particle is transferred to the coating. So, when you use the silicon oxide of lesser hardness you have decreased efficiency of this uh, uh, with which the incident energy of the erodent particle is transferred to the coating. So, you get a erosion wear is increased with increase in erodent hardness or erosion wear is decreased with the increase in erosion hardness. The ratio of erosion rate at an impact angles of 90 and 30 degrees in the case of coatings increases with decreasing impact velocity, impact velocity with increasing hardness of the erodent. The oxygen to fuel ratio as well as the extent of the decarburization has a marginal influence on the erosion rate. And this study indicates the coating obtained using oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.50 having the highest hardness and indentation fracture toughness combination consistently exhibits the lowest erosion rate among the coatings. So, it actually indicates the property influence. With respect to the mechanisms of metal removal, the tungsten carbide cobalt coatings eroded with silicon oxide erodent exhibits mainly the ploughing mechanism of erosion and they do not exhibit any subsurface cracking, very very negligible cracking was subsurface damage was observed. Whereas, when we use the silicon carbide as erodent we, we, we see extensive ploughing as well as the subsurface cracking. So, when softer erodent was used it is mostly ploughing mechanism whereas, harder erodent was used in addition to ploughing we also have the subsurface cracking. So, the surface and subsurface regions of this eroded tungsten carbide cobalt coatings revealed that extensive cracking at the splat boundaries which are weaker regions 
that resulted into higher erosion wear rate in the coatings deposited with the higher oxygen to fuel ratio. So, uh, this particular study indicates the complicated influence of the erodent type on the erosion wear behavior of the tungsten carbide cobalt coatings. Right? So, overall this study indicates that erosion resistance is not a material property, it is a system property. So, involving influence from the erodent type, the hardness of the material coating material as well as the angle of impingement. Thank you.